major support for Able to Learn Air, Green Mountain Support Services, to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Welcome to this edition of Able to Learn Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able in Vermont and beyond. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlen Seiler. And on this, uh, on the phone edition of Able to Learn Air, we have Shakemu Sajame uh, of the Park Trust and Times. He's the editor of the Park Trust and Times. And um, myself, Lauren Seiler, I happen to have a column uh, with the Park Trust and Times called Able to Speak Up, which is based on Able to Learn Air. And, and it's an opinion column. Everything from housing to um, to homelessness uh, um, and the like. And the Parkchester Times is a local paper within the Parkchester Center of the Bronx. Thank you for joining us, um, Shikay Musa, on this edition of Able to Learn Air. You see, um, economic development uh, will not come to a neighborhood unless, you know, there's a theft in net, theft in person and theft in property. So, um, you know, 10 years ago, you know, we, um, we decided that, you know, we will make public safety our priority number one for our activism. And we launched several, you know, uh, programs to design to number one, build bridges among residents, among, you know, the residents and law enforcement, mm -hmm. among religious leaders and community activists. So uh, that culminates into this December. So, you know, among the groups that were active in building peace and harmony and quality of life in the Bronx, we've decided that, you know, why not um, take the month of December with a lot of religious groups to celebrate and make it a big month and let's uh, make every day in December a day where we truly celebrate peaceful coexistence, harmony, love, yeah. and anti-violence. And that um, yeah. this year we are very happy that we will be celebrating our 10th year anniversary, uh, promoting peace in the month of December and along with 22 other nations in the world that have joined the Peace December movement. So we're excited about it. Uh, you know, the month of December has been officially, um, you know. Because Christmas, because Christmas and all those holidays, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, it shouldn't be, I mean, it's okay to accept gifts, but, you know, we should accept peace and harmony first, you know, you know then a gift. Um, would you, so would you agree that, um, we as a people and as a nation and, and as the world need to change to have more peace in this world because um, there's too much military spending, there's too much um, problems going on with our administration, etc. How would you, uh, in your opinion, deal with that? You know, I don't know if you're following, there is an organization called you know, World Peace Index. And what they do is they indice conflict and peace throughout the world. And last year, their index saw that we spent almost $15 trillion in global conflict. Mm. And a $15 trillion. So United Nations said, if we have $250 billion, we will eradicate poverty, I mean hunger. If we have $200 billion, we will send every boy and girl to school, meaning universal, uh, as a, a global universal education. Now, we spent $15 trillion in conflict in the United States. Since you said, since you said about hunger, um, you know, Trump is getting ready to turn around and, you know, I'm sure you know about the free lunch program, okay? Yeah. 
so um, that that schools have. Trump is getting ready and, and get uh, he wants to get rid of that. So why are you getting rid of a program that people need? Some some school lunch programs that might be the only meal a child may get throughout the whole entire day, both both. Uh, breakfast and lunch and some some schools are serving dinner um, uh, what is your take on that you know in the Bronx where we are um, we have some districts for example district 10 where about 35 percent of the students are homeless meaning um, that you, what? Know, you said 35 percent of the student population is homeless Wow. Wow. Okay. So, so you have, you know, you have a situation where his kid would come to school, uh, not from, you know, their nice cozy bedrooms, nothing, but they come from shelters. And these shelters are not stable. They move from shelter to shelter, border to border, you know, neighborhood to neighborhood, and they are hungry, yeah. they are tired. In most cases, they don't have enough sleep, and they have so much physical and psychological trauma. And you know, you cut up, you know, the, you know, the resources, the schools. This is a genocide. So, but again, they said elections have consequences. I think, uh, um, you know, voters need to, you know, need to be very careful concerning who they elect, so that. You know, these entitlement that people do need will not be eliminated. And, and, the, and as far as the school, as far as the school lunch is concerned, I've done some research, and it's pretty alarming. Do you know that half? Since you're going to be running a school next year, do you know that half of the people, half of people who throw out this or kids, they throw out the school lunch. Right, and it ends up in yeah. the garbage. So, and, and you know, you I mean, you can feed armies with that food. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. Go ahead. Yeah, no, um, you know, schools have you know moral responsibility in um, educating parents, not the students, parents. You know, our school. We have a motto that says, you know, we discipline parents to educate children. And the reason why we say that is, you know, these kids are coming from homes that have very irresponsible adults in, in, in the kids' life, whether they are biological parents or, or adoptive or whether they're in shelter. So um, some of these parents are no better than the kids. Therefore, you know, part of disciplining parents is how to pack the lunches because if the child will not eat it or is not healthy or whatever, so then the school, you know, should educate, you know, the uh, you know the adults in this kids' life. So there are a lot that can be done. One of the programs we have in our school, um, you know, we call it compound effect. And what we mean by compound effect is that, you know, a lot of kids who are struggling in school, it's not that they are dumb, it's not that they are bad, anything, but there are circumstances beyond their control that is hindering their progress. And the only way you can help them you know, become achievers if you can find out what is holding them, what is bothering them, what is hurting them, what is preventing them from, you know, from, from, from succeeding, yes, and then you yeah. address it. So, which means that the advocate is not only in the school, but, you know, throughout the child's life and community, and anything that attached to that child must be known, mm -hmm. and what needs to be addressed, addressed. So, we call that compound effect, because, you, uh, you know, negative to compound, so you positive. Yeah. Poverty is the same. Yeah, it's, uh, it's homeless. Um, so, um, uh, now, uh, is your school going to be educating parents as well? Uh, like if a parent doesn't have their GED, or uh, how, is that going to, you know, factor into anything? 
Yes, one of the programs also we have launched, we call it the tea out stress. Tea out mm -hmm. stress, meaning mm -hmm. that, you know, because we serve, you know, diverse parent population. We have parents who are new immigrants, uh, you know, to the, uh, to the system. We have parents uh, um, who did not go to school or who did not finish even high school. We have parents, uh, you know, who are very busy, even though they can but they So, you know, a wide variety of differences. So it is the, the school's, uh, again, moral responsibility to find out where needs are, you know, where they need and address. So if, let's say, the homework is not being done because the parents cannot help their child, not if the parents can help their child, their children with math and science and whatever, yeah. then, then either you provide it in-house or you provide referral where the child can get that help. And in cases where, you know, you can provide you know, English as a second language, or you can provide GED programs uh, for the parents to so be it. So, but the bottom line is you cannot um, have a giving student population. Uh, are, you, that comes are you going to have a separate <laughs> um, uh, program within your school dealing with uh, disabled special needs students? You know, because we are small private schools, you know, certain requirements dealing with specialized population um, is not affordable to us. So uh, what we do is we have linkages, you know, where we can refer, you know, schools that are deemed very high uh, performing and so where the child can get what they deserve. Yeah. Because, you know, if, if a child is put in an environment that is not conducive for learning, because of who they are or their, yeah. you know, their physical needs, then you're wasting that child's time and, and then you're also causing harm. So even if the child needs to be transported to Manhattan to get what they deserve, so be it. But the most important thing is that yeah. let the child be in an environment that is conducive for him or her you right. know, to succeed right. and thrive. Mm -hmm. how, how are you going to deal with bullying? Yeah, how are you going to deal with, with student bullying and all of that stuff along with that? Because th that's a huge issue. And, that, yes, and that's, a, a, that's going to mentally scar a child. Um, in terms of school bullying, you have people around the nation that commit suicide because of it. So how are you going to deal with that issue? The beauty of running a private school is that you put the policies and procedures in place. And uh, we ran a school for the past 18 years. We never ever had a major problem when it comes to gang involvement, bullying, bias attacks, or any type of thing. Because the first two weeks of the child uh, coming to the school are uh, spent making sure that this child completely adopts to our policies and rules and environment. And yeah. sometimes it's challenging, but after the second week, the, the child began to, you know, to adapt and realize that, you know, oh, oh, it's a different environment. For example, you know, when a child was enrolled, you know, they usually say, you know what, my parents say that if somebody hit me, I'll hit them back, or blah, blah, blah. We say, no, they also, but there's no hitting, there is no hitting back. The teacher is responsible for your safety and well-being. If anybody says something bad or anybody do something bad, it is the teacher's responsibility to take care of it, not you. Because right. if you take matters into your own hands, both of you will be punished and both of you will be suspended. So after the end of the second week, the kids adopt our environment and they become family. No problem. Mm. Well, we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able and On Air. Um, we'd like to thank Shaquem Musa Drame of the Parchester Times. Uh, you do wonderful work in the, in the, um, in the five boroughs and in, in this world, and we just want to thank you for joining us on Able and On Air. For more information on the Parchester Times and uh, my column, Able to Speak Up, as well as other things with the Parchester Times, you can uh, reach them at www.
parkchestertimes.com. Um, again, thank you, Shaky, for joining us on Able to Run Air. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Larry, and thank you, your wife, and you guys are doing a wonderful job. And may God continue to brighten the, uh, the future for you and your family. Okay, thank you. Uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, mm -hmm. um, Washington, County, uh, Washington County Mental Health, um, Green Mountain Support Services, and Allah Israel. Um, thank you again for joining us on this edition of Babel Den on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time.